Today I'm gonna commit the biggest atrocity that I could possibly commit on this channel. We are gonna talk about a console. Brand new, PS5, you heard of it? All right, so I know a lot of you right now are like, oh, unsub, unsub, geez, talking about consoles, unsub. Hey, technically it's an AMD small form factor PC. With RDNA 2. With RDNA 2 and DDR5. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, no, what we're gonna talk about today, it's not a new concept, but it's one that we're gonna go ahead and show on our channel, because I know the amount of people that actually have consoles and stuff to watch this channel might benefit from this. We are going to talk about how to expand the storage. There have been tons of videos on this, but not on this channel. So today we are gonna be doing that. And of course, this is through the help of our friends over at Corsair. They have sent over and sponsored today's video by using an MP600 Pro LPX uh, SSD. So this is a two terabyte. If, if you've downloaded any games, installed on any console in the last 10 years, you know how fast internal storage will go. I remember I had a, what was it? I think it was like a 120 gig uh, Xbox 360 and how fast that would fill up and games have only gotten bigger. And ever since consoles moved on to uh, latest hardware, specifically the, you know, the, the RDNA and, and AMD builds that you find inside PS5s now, game sizes are massive. So having better storage is important. Now you can hook up external storage, However, putting a nice fast NVMe SSD in there, which does use PCIe Gen 4 inside of the PS5, and this one is up to 7,100 megabytes per second sequential read and up to 6,800 megabytes per second se sequential write, means that this will allow you a huge amount of storage as well as a really fast experience. So there is an additional M.2 slot inside the PS5. I don't know how many people are aware of that, but the nice thing about this having an actual M.2 slot inside of it means that you can just, and it's easy to install. The days of having consoles be completely non-user friendly. Xbox 360 tool, opening tool, anyone? And remember those days, how hard it was to actually open up an Xbox 360, unless you just used a hammer like I did. Um, it's actually quite easy now. It's toolless to open the system. We'll do a step-by-step -step guide today on how to do that. But before we can do that, we have to let you guys know uh, some of the things that you have to think about. One, system update is very important. This is a brand new out of the box PS5. We are in version 1.0, which means we have to provide an update because there's actually an update that came out for the PS5 that allows for expansion storage to be recognized and formatted because it must be formatted to work with the console. Second of all, you need a low profile M.2 cooler. Now. The cooler is one of those things I'm kind of interested like how well it actually works because there is a cover that will go on top of the cooler. And as soon as you cover that up, it's like, is the cooler doing anything? I don't know. But if you get a um, M.2 that has a pre-installed like standard height cooler, it's not gonna clear the cover and we'll show you that once we get inside the unit. So a low profile cooler attached to an M.2 PCIe Gen 4 drive is going to be very important for this. Now I do also have my iFixit kit. Even if I wasn't working on this, I'd still have my iFixit kit on me. We're gonna be using that to open up the M.2 um, drive bay cover itself. So before we get in there, let's do the most boring part, which is get our updates going. And we will be back here in about 73 minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. As somebody that has not had a PlayStation in, since like PS2, honestly, and has had Xbox ever since, I'm really impressed with how fast Sony downloads and updates, downloads updates and, up, and applies them. Whereas Xbox, I feel like it's just like, out on coffee break, you know, good old Microsoft servers. Anyway, moving on, um, check system software update settings. We've updated um, up to date. So now we will have the software that will allow us to be able to expand our storage. Speaking of storage, I'll show you why this is important. If we go to storage, you'll see 667.2 gigabytes with 649.2 gigabytes free. You can see why uh, expanding your storage to a two terabyte or even an additional one terabyte um, would make a massive difference for your gaming uh, you know, experience here on, on, on PS5. So let me go ahead and turn this off. Um, how do you turn it off? There you go here. How do you turn the thing off? What? What is ray of light? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our MP600 LPX. I've put these in quite a few systems of mine, but I've never actually installed these, uh, or the LPX version. So this would also do a great job on a computer that needs uh, extra clearance for the M.2. Sometimes you don't have those covers that are part of the motherboard and they go like right under a graphics card or something. You have a tall cooler, it could interfere with some graphics cards. So the LPX would actually fit um, the scenario perfectly for a situation like that. So not just consoles, but obviously anything where stand or the height of the cooler is gonna be important. Plus it's pre-installed, so thermal pads and everything are already in there. Opening up the PlayStation, 
This is so much nicer than back in the day when we would have like special tools required for a 360. You need to lift up on this corner. So here's the drive. Lift up on the corner opposite of the drive while pushing down that way. And it comes right off. I mean, here's the M.2 storage drive right there. So you see, or I should say expansion slot right there. So you see how easy it is to access this. So to take this off, using my iFixit here with my Phillips screwdriver. Long screw right there, set that aside. And pull this cover off. Ah! It'd be a lot easier if I actually had fingernails. So this cooler, or this cover is why the low profile cooler is important. To be honest though, I'm not entirely sure how effective it is with this cover on there, the cooler I should say, because there's no ventilation in here. There's no perforations, there's no openings. It's completely sealed off. So that's something to keep in mind. But if we take a look right here, we've got a screw currently set to the 110 location. Now this is millimeters right here. This is an 80 drive. So we're gonna have to move the screw and the standoff over to the 80. But as you can see here, it supports 30, 42, 60, 80, and 100. So if I go ahead and remove this screw, you'll notice that little shim moves with it. Whereas on a computer, you'd be used to this shim right here. This shim right here normally is threaded in for computers. This is just a spacer shim, essentially. So move it to your appropriate spot, which in this system is the 80. So take your drive and align the notch, just like you would a computer. Push it all the way in, push it down through the spacer, and that will hold our drive down. And you can see too how this cooler on, or heat sink on top of the M.2 is like the perfect height to fit underneath this cover. I'm a little bit conflicted on whether or not I should put the cover back on, if I know the truth. If there's a way to monitor temperatures on this or install a temperature probe, maybe I'll do this offline and it might be worth making a video about later on on what the temperatures get on this M.2. But anyway, moving forward, the tab back on, put down the cover, reinstall the screw. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of surprised none of this air blows across it. Like there's no opening here to blow air across it, but whatever. So anyway, that's it. Take your cover, snap it back on. We are now installed and expanded. You know what else is expanded? My waistline over the years. Two terabytes worth? To do like all expansion slots, man, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> expansion slots being belt holes. Well, a couple of petabytes. <laughs> a couple of petabytes of belt hole expansion. <laughs> so as soon as we turn on the system, it should automatically recognize um, the new drive and then we'll come up with a screen. There we go, right here. Repairing console storage. It's funny they call it repair. Normally it will say formatting. <laughs> so I think what it might've done right there is just automatically kind of changed its boot order in its, in its own BIOS kind of thing. But it will give you a message that says, uh, new drive installed, formatting, getting it ready, blah, blah, blah. To use your M.2, you need to format it. When you format your M.2 SSD, all data on it will be deleted. So if you're using this drive out of like a computer and you're like, ah, I'll just leave these files on here and let my PS5 use what's left over, it doesn't work that way. It's gonna format it. So if you wanna keep using the PS5 without formatting M.2, turn off your PS5 and then remove your SSD. Note that the data, screenshots, video clips can't be saved in M.2 SSD storage. So all those clips, and save data and all that sort of stuff that happens on your PS5, like if you do screenshots or game save information, that's all gonna be on the system drive. The actual games and stuff can be installed on the storage to save system drive space. So don't format, nope, we are going to format. Is my controller off, there we go. How fast is this gonna go? Should go pretty fast. Yeah, look at that. Showing this in real time, because it's so quick. So much faster than Xbox, I'm telling you right now. So it read at 5,531 megabytes per second. So as you see, good old AMD right here. This is a Ryzen system with PCIe Gen 4 getting <laughs> cool. 5,531 megabytes per second on a console. Look at that. Your PS5 wasn't turned off properly. <laughs> so I pulled the plug because I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> it's yelling at me. <laughs> at least it has recognition for idiots like me. Rebuilding database, did you see that? 
There it is, so two separate storage, right? So our console storage and our M.2 storage, and then any USB external storage. So extended storage is actually external, right? Any USB uh, on the backside. There's our full terabytes. Uh, full terabytes? Full two terabytes. Two terabytes. Yeah, look at that. And then you can even reformat it from right here if you wanted to. But anyway, so there you go. I know this is an odd one. You know, I used to cover consoles back when I first started my channel. I even have a video of me taking an ax to an Xbox 360 and running it over with a, with a Durango. <laughs> Those were the days. Anyway, we're gonna be setting this up in the office because I wanna play Gran Turismo, what is it, seven? Yeah. Yeah, because it's actually got a ZL11 LE in it and I've got one of those cars and so I wanna play with it on there so I can crash it there. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.